I suppose Jos Verstappen has quite a few regrets about his career, as it's clear that things often didn't go the way he wanted things to go. In my previous video about Jos Verstappen, I described a big misconception about his racing skills and four other things people got wrong about Jos Verstappen. That video has 31k views and the reactions I received were overwhelming. I'll leave it up as an end screen in case you haven't seen it. So I started researching again, talked to some people involved and decided to make a video about Jos finally getting what he always dreamed of. And then abruptly things changed which was something that was typical for the career of Jos the boss. Some of you might already know what I'm talking about but others might not. I think the next 10 minutes or so will be interesting either way. I'm Wimbo, here's 3 seconds to leave a like. History of Jos Let me start with a short history of the career of Jos Verstappen and what his career looked like until his fortune changed to then get hit by the harsh reality of Formula 1 again. Jos started his F1 career as a reserve driver for Benetton. The greatest driver of all time, Michael Schumacher, was the number one driver there and JJ Leto was the second driver. Verstappen was promoted when Leto got injured, but it was too soon for Jos and a string of incidents saw him being loaned to Simtech. Unfortunately, they had money problems and went bankrupt. Then he found a drive at Footwork Arrows, but they stopped developing the car early in the season, so the results weren't great and he was dropped. His next team was Tyrell, another backmarker. Ken Tyrell had faith in him and sold the team to BAR and they insisted on Ricardo Rosset, who brought money with him to drive in that seat. So Jos Verstappen started testing again until he replaced Kevin Magnussen's father, Jan Magnussen, at Stewart. That wasn't a great success either and Johnny Herbert replaced him. It was at this stage of Jos Verstappen's career that a major opportunity presented itself through Honda. A team that was catering to his needs with a lot of financial backing. History of Honda Sochero Honda was a real racer in the 1930s, especially motor racing, he won a lot of races. He started the Honda company in 1949 and he entered a team in F1 in 1964. In 1965, Honda scored his first win. Then, in 1968, they withdrew from F1 to focus on developing road cars. In 1985, Honda returned as an engine supplier. They supplied engines to Williams and later Team Lotus. Honda won their first race with Keke Rosberg, Nico's father, and in 1987, the championship with Nelson Piquet. Max's father-in-law wants Max and Kelly get hitched. Honda stayed very successful with Prost and Senna dominating in the McLaren era. But in 1992, Honda took a step back again and only stayed low-key involved through Mugen Motorsport. So it's clear that Honda, albeit with great success, always had a rocky relationship with Formula 1. This is something that would continue through recent times, where they decided to step back and let Red Bull start their own powertrains department, to then decide to come back in F1 to supply Aston Martin with engines. Anyway, in the middle of 1998, they had an ambitious plan to start their own F1 team with Jos Verstappen as the leading driver for the project. The plan. Honda made plans in 1998 to join the grid again. The first talks they had were with Eddie Jordan of the Jordan F1 team. That plan never came to fruition as Honda wanted to buy 100% of that team. The Irishman wanted to stay involved and asked to keep 10%. But Honda didn't want that as the name Jordan would take away the attention of Honda itself. Jordan declined the offer and Honda decided to create a full works team starting in the year 2000. Going it alone was thought to be a better option as there would be no clash of cultures between the Japanese and the European cultures. Well, we've seen with the three years that Honda and McLaren worked together after 2015 that this indeed caused a lot of friction. But that's maybe something for another video. The Honda RA099 in 1999, Honda built a prototype F1 car. It was designed by Harvey Postlethwaite and the chassis was built by Delara. The rest of the car was built at the Delara factory, but by a team of engineers from the old Tyrell team. The team was basically English mechanics and designers employed by Honda. The first time the car ran was in Italy on a foggy, cold and frosty morning on the 21st of December in 1998 at a secret location close to Parma. The Lara is the company that built the Formula 2 cars in recent history. With the prototype car in place and a very capable and respected designer leading the project, they started testing. 
Joost Verstappen was the driver that was in the car at the first test in Jerez. He topped the timetables in those tests. So that looked promising. The competition looked at that performance with raised eyebrows. They accused the Honda team of running the car very underweight. It was not underweight, it was bang on the target of the legal weight limit. According to my source, who was part of the engineers. This prompted the FIA to have stricter tests for cars doing tests, even if they didn't compete in the coming championship yet. A bigger test was done in Barcelona that year with eight teams present. In that test, Verstappen was ninth fastest between the two Mugen Honda cars. Although it has been said, he might have been even quicker than that. This was everything that Jos hoped for. A team where he was the number one driver with maximum input in the development of the car and already competitive in the tests. But unfortunately, Honda and their political struggles up on the top offices threw a spanner in the works. Why the project failed. Before I continue this video, I'd like to ask new viewers to subscribe to this channel. I made it into the partner program, so I'm getting a little reward through ad revenue, but I'd love to work with a sponsor. For that, I need an audience, and that audience is seen in the number of subscribers. I make two to three videos per week, and I'm starting live streams and podcasts again soon. Thanks a million! The troubles started, as always, with money. Honda had pitched a budget of £125 million for the whole project, which was at the time just as much as Ferrari spent in F1. This caused friction within the Honda board. Even the people on the board who supported the works team started having doubts and the team, with Jordan involved, looked to be a safer option. Postlethwaite tried to change the board's mind by flying over to Japan to talk to management and he wrote a letter. He was desperate to save the team and outlined a great plan that would see Honda moving into F1 more gradually. Harvey was trying to fund the project himself through independent investment. We don't know if it was the stress of this huge project or other underlying health issues, but Harvey Postlethwaite had a heart attack and died. A lot of people think this was the sole reason why the project failed, but this is not the case. Honda was already in talks with BAR to become a work supplier to their team. This deal saw Honda have total machine development with the team and it allowed more flexibility and a lower risk due to the costs. Again, very unlucky for Jos Verstappen to be this close to a great car to be able to show what he was made of. But the story of Verstappen and Honda wasn't over just yet. Max and Honda Red Bull had big problems with the Renault package for years in the hybrid era, so they switched the sister team Toro Rosso to Honda engines. That looked very promising at the end of 2018, so Helmut Marko decided to make a deal with Honda to start using their engines in 2019 for the Red Bull team. Max Verstappen was very happy with that deal after visiting the Honda factory at the end of 2018. He was quoted saying, I believe in it, and the team clearly believes in it, because they signed the deal. And it's exciting as well. You have basically Honda working for Red Bull and Toro Rosso only, so it's purely designed around your car. That is also very good. Now, we all know what was achieved with that collaboration. Finally, young Max Verstappen had a reliable car that made it able to fight for wins and in 2021 for the title. Remember what we felt in that glorious last lap of racing in 2021. That title was just as much Jos's doing as it was Max's. The romantic in me says that the Verstappen Honda story came full circle on the 12th of December in Abu Dhabi. Take care now. Doei doei. A special thanks to my channel members. Your help is much appreciated. If you want to support this channel too, click the link down below.